have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. Better, stronger, faster. Mostly when I do the TV to Toys video series, I like to give you a backstory of the TV show before I dig into the toy line. But today I want to do something a little different. Dave Strustrom's YouTube channel is amazing when it comes to talking about the good stuff, as he calls it, pop culture of mostly the 70s and 80s. Any fan of this channel will be a fan of his channel for sure, and he really digs into those actors and characters from television shows you grew up on and what happened to them. He even has a video about Jan Smithers, to me the always hotter than Lonnie Anderson on WKRP. I said it before, I'll say it again, I was a Bailey fan. I thought with this episode, from TV to toys, I would let Dave tell you about the $6 million man television show, and I'll handle the toys. That makes my job half as easy, and I'm sure he probably knows more about the television show than I do. So Dave, tell us about the television series of $6 million man. Sure, young man, I'd love to tell you more about the $6 million man. Starting with a trio of television movies in 1973, the Six Million Dollar Man ran for five seasons on ABC and told the story of former astronaut Steve Austin, played by Lee Majors. Austin has superhuman strength due to bionic implants and is employed as a secret agent by a fictional U.S. government office called OSI. The series was based on the book Cyborg by Martin Caden, who was both a writer and a pilot himself. The story goes that Caden witnessed a crash that nearly killed test pilot Bruce Peterson, and with that incident in mind, he wrote the novel Cyborg, which was the working title for the series as well during pre-production. I knew that the show was going to be a big hit. As if the cover of TV Guide wasn't enough, the clincher was Dynamite Magazine. Yep, there he is, right there on the cover, Steve Austin in all his glory. That's how I could tell the really big hits. The one-two punch of Dynamite Magazine preceded by TV Guide. Man, I love Dynamite. I think the only way you could get it was by ordering it through those little scholastic book order forms in school. Really great stuff. I wish it were still around. It's probably worth mentioning that my favorite, all-time favorite Six Million Dollar Man episodes were the ones with Bigfoot in it. Here's the TV guide listing for that very first episode. I remember seeing this print ad and just freaking out. Steve led to Death Trap by Giant Man Beast. And then as you peruse the smaller print, it says exactly what I'd hoped it would say, face to face with Bigfoot. TV guides usually came out a week in advance of the listings. The time between reading that ad, which I did over and over, and actually watching the show, well, it seemed like an eternity. Later on during the series run, we would get the Soviet creation, the Death Probe. And who can forget the Fembots? They created all sorts of problems for Steve, as well as his bionic bestie, Jamie Summers. So now it's your turn, young man. Why don't you tell us about the Kenner toys that came from that program? I'll do just that. The $6 million man action figure line was one of Kenner's first huge hits in the action figure boy market. The show was a ratings hit with kids, so toys just seemed perfect. Released in 1975, the basic figure line was made up of six or maybe eight action figures. Why is the total number a little confusing? Well, I'll tell you about that in a second. The figures were 13 inches, and three of them were made of different versions of Steve Austin, a.k.a. the $6 million man. But they also made his boss, so kids could have someone give $6 million man a mission to go on. They were two villains, or maybe four villains, as part of this line also. Call up the repair station. <laughs> Let's look at the action figures first. There were three Steve Austin figures. The figures were mostly the same, but would have a different bionic feature. There was Steve Austin with bionic grip, Steve Austin with bionic arm, Steve Austin with energy block. They all had the sonic eye that kids could look through to see how the six million dollar man would see. His boss, Oscar Goldman, would also get a figure wearing a fancy sports coat. For the villain figures, there was the bionic Bigfoot, this was the must-have for any kid playing with these toys. The chest would explode the show. Spoiler alert, Bigfoot was a robot. The other villain in the line was Maskatron, another robot figure that would come with three masks so he could fool Steve Austin and his best friends. The mask would fit over the robot's face of the head. Now that's six figures, but the line could be seven or eight. A Fembot figure was released, but released under the Bionic Woman logo. 
Kenner also did a full Bionic Woman line, but being that Fembot and Jamie Summers were both in Six Million Dollar Man, you can see where this could be part of the Six Million Dollar Man line also. There was also a knockoff villain sold at Montgomery Ward called Dr. Chrome Dome. Although smaller, it was also made by Kenner. And it was clear that Montgomery Ward and Kenner wanted kids buying Six Million Dollar Man to buy this figure to play along with them. I did a whole video to this figure here, and I'll link to it at the end of this video so you can learn more. Kenner also sold four sets of clothes so you could buy them to make you feel like you have a new action figure. There was Mission to Mars outfit, the Test Flight outfit, and the OSI Undercover Assignment outfit. But this line wasn't just about the action figures. It came with a lot of playsets and accessories to make the line more fun. There was the backpack radio that really worked. The Bionic Transport and Repair Station. The Bionic Missile Vehicle. The Bionic Video Center, which was more of a movie viewer, but it was sold as a TV for Steve Austin to watch. There was a command console. Mission Control Center. The OSI Headquarters. The Portable Communicator. And the Venus Space Probe. Kenner also sold body parts to make your old figure seem new. There were a pack of bionic legs and a pack of bionic arms. Kenner would also release a small drag racing car set under their TTP line. The figure inside was small but was attached to the vehicle. There was the bionic cycle, the dual launch drag set, and the tower and cycle set. Kenner would also release a CB headset radio receiver for more of a role playing toy. They would also release a handful of other $6 million man toys, like $6 million man temporary tattoos, $6 million man see a show, and the $6 million man movie viewer. Today this line is highly collectible, with the box figures going in the high hundreds to even the low thousands, but loose you can find them at times under $100, as always depending on the condition and if it's complete or not. Well that's a look at the TV show and toys for the $6 million man. I want to give a big thanks again to Dave for coming on to help tell about the television show and his thoughts on it. You can find a link to his great YouTube channel in the description below. Check him out and tell him the junk man sent you. And in the comments section here, tell me about the Six Million Dollar Man. Did you have these toys? Did you like watching the television show? Tell me that and more in the comments below. And as always, thumb up so you like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, junk man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.